So just to recap, our circles, while we bound them and they were on the page, they had no x or y position, radius, or fill color. So what this chunk of code basically says in English is, for each data point, our circle change its x position according to its date and its y position according to its attendance. Add an attribute of radius, in this case it's a radius of 3, as we said previously, and fill it with a color, in this case blue. Before we move on, I just wanted to make one more point about the anonymous accessor functions, or go over rather a different way of looking at them. While you can think of these as any other function, it takes some input, in this case d, which corresponds to an individual row from our data, and gives some output, in this case for the x position, a pixel value returned from the time scale. I often like to think of the accessor functions as analogous to the properties of a class for folks who are comfortable with object-oriented programming, or in a more simple sense, simply a variable. In this case, the accessor function for setting the x position returns a variable value depending on what data point gets passed into it. So again, while you can put some logic to transform your data or perform some other actions inside of the accessor function, typically I only use it in the sense of pulling out some data and returning some value that's dependent on that value I pulled out. So in most of the uses of these anonymous accessor functions in D3, it's often useful to think of them as some data dependent value. Based on what the bound data is, the accessor function should return some value derived from the data. And again, this allows us to customize each function for each data point. In this case, for datum one, place it at the x position of datum one's date. For datum two, place it at the x position of datum two's date and so forth all the way to datum 836 or however many pieces of data you have in your data set.